Today I want to talk about remote control of uh, oscilloscopes primarily, but essentially any equipment. Uh, with the COVID situation at the moment, a lot of people are trying to work from home, avoid going into labs. Uh, equally for teaching, um, the, the, the need is there for perhaps remote student access to equipment. Uh, a lot of the kit that we, you know, you already have uh, does have that capability. I just want to walk you through how you would set it up on some of the most sort of common equipment that we've got out there. Uh, in this case, I've got a, a Roden Swartz RTO oscilloscope. So this includes a, a, an internal web web server. So it's as simple as finding the IP address. So just go file uh, setup. I'll set up. And the the IP address is clearly shown in the the centre of the screen there. We just pop that IP address into our web browser and we've got pretty much instant remote control. Now in this case I'm set up on a, a local area network but there's no reason you couldn't do that remotely um, via the internet. It's just a matter of opening up the, the appropriate ports on your firewall. So I'll just pop in the IP address, show you how it works. Okay, so that defaults to um, just a little info screen showing you about the about the, the instrument. Let me zoom that in so you can see it better. Uh, make sure that's legible. But yeah, it just gives you the instrument serial number, model number, etc. And we've got the options down the side for device screenshot or web control, um, a few other utilities and bits and pieces. The the one I'm mostly interested in is uh, the web remote. I'll just zoom this back out so we get a full screen. Web control. Maximize my window. There we go. So that's now showing the um, what's on the, the device screen as well as a virtual front panel. Um, so if I just take my mouse now, I can click to close that dialog. Um, I can I can control anything here as if it were directly on the scope. Um, so if I want to rearrange my windows or, or see the update, let me see, I'll just change this to something more interesting looking. Okay. So you can see there's a there's a reasonable update rate there. You can see there's a there's a delay between the the, the scope screen and what's shown on on the uh, uh, the laptop, but the the actual refresh rate isn't bad. Um, certainly good enough for, for taking measurements. Um, in this case I've got a, a, a 2.4 gig um, VCO and we're looking at the RF output, <coughs> the enable line and a control voltage. So I'll just rearrange these waveforms a little so we can see better what we're looking at. Move that to the top of the screen. Okay. Change my trigger mode. So if I just turn on and off the the VCO, okay. So there's a single capture of the the, the VCO turning on. The green trace here is the, the the VCO enable. The orange trace is the the PLL voltage, and then we have the FFT, well the gated FFT at this point in time. Um, and I can drag that gated window around again as if I was directly at the scope. So I can pull this back, we can see you know, there's the, the PLL kind of just kicking in and yeah, wandering around in frequency as it settles, overshoots, come back. So you can see we could quite easily do a, a settling time measurement there, just add a couple of cursors and yeah, we're done. Um, but yeah, full control of the, the instrument remotely with nothing more than a web browser. Okay, so the next instrument we'll look at is the RTM from Roden Swartz. So this would be the kind of mid-range bench scope, um, typically with our um, industrial customers. Uh, the process for setting this one up is exactly the same as the, the RTB 2000 series. 
Um, very similar user interface, similar form factor, um, but lower cost and typically um, found more in, in education labs. Uh, so if you're using RTB or RTM, exactly the same. So similar setup, we have a, an internal web server, so it's just a matter of finding the IP address. So if you look in the top right corner of the the instrument, there's a little button there for network, press that, it shows the IP address. If we want more info, press the little setting button. Oops, missed. Uh, it'll show you the, the setup for USB, Ethernet, and then you hit the parameters. That gives you your, your full setup, so it also shows the, um, the ports that are being used. So if you need to open it up over the firewall, you've got all the details, information there. So our IP address in this case, 81, I'll just pop that into our web browser. Oops. So again, you get an information screen showing the serial number, model number, etc. Um, we can do a lot from here. We take screenshots. We've got Skippy device control. We can save and load settings um, from your local machine to the scope. Um, we can do just live screen capture. Um, useful for teaching where you don't actually want to interact with, you just want to show what's on the screen. Um, so here we have again, that is a, a live screen, um, so I'll just I'll break something so you can see that it is live. But it's, at the moment I'm just looking at a, an I2C decode using the internal pattern generator. Uh, so that's our I2C data, clock and uh, decoded data. Um, so as well as just the, the live screen, we also have full remote control. So if we do the remote front panel, we get a <coughs> uh, we get the again the live screen and a, a virtual front panel of the scope. So from here we can con we can control anything. Um, let me see what we do. Um, so we can go into you know any of the channel setups. I can change the configuration. I can Turn off a channel. Um, if I want to, I don't know, add measurements, I can press the, the measurement button over here. Um, select a measurement, peak to peak of channel one, okay. All the usual measurements are available. Let's see, we'll do frequency of channel one, and that's now showing down the bottom there. Um, it's again full operation of the scope. Um, this particular laptop isn't a touch a touch screen one, but uh, with a touch laptop, then you could do your pinch zoom controls just as if you were at the instrument. Um, so again, very easy. Literally, just point your web browser at the scope, and you have full full functionality, full remote control. Okay, next I have the the RTC from Roden Swartz. So this is the entry level uh, entry level scope from Rode. Um Again, this one is mainly an education scope. Um, pretty basic. Well, that's how we look, see? Um, point that out a bit, show it. So that's just looking at the, the probe cal signal. Um, we've also got the usual range of measurements, all that good stuff. Let's save them, quick measure, and quick view. So that's just showing off the kind of the, the most common measurements, doing your peak. Um, you know, rise and fall times, average level, etc. Um, so remote control of this one, um, we've got. Well, we don't have as much functionality, um, but we do. We can still um, connect to the 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 IP address. So to find the IP, go into setup, interface, and parameter. And it's showing me my IP address setup here. And again, the IP control port, 5025, HTTP port is 80. And okay. So, we just pop that into our web, into our web browser. Okay. 
Okay. And again, we get the information on the instrument, so it's serial number, etc. Um, from here, we can save and recall um, waveform data. We can send individual skippy commands. So, for instance, I'll uh, we'll send the ident command. It says, yep, yeah, hello, I'm a Rodent Sports RTC 102. Um, and then we have screenshot capability. So, again, that's just showing what's on the, the instrument's uh, front panel at the moment. So, we'll just get rid of that. Just take it up. You can see it doesn't run uh, a live refresh by default. Um, there's an auto refresh down here set to off or 10 seconds, 20 seconds, etc. So it is just literally taking a, a single screenshot. And the control set again is limited. Um, we have, we can preset it just to default the instrument back to, to nothing. We can run auto set and we can control the, the run behaviour, so we can do run, stop, or single sequence. Um, so again there, if I press stop, you see the instrument stops. If I do single scan, yeah. Um, or just go back to live run mode. So you have limited remote control of the, um, the web browser. You can send skippy device commands for Kind of, well, full control, though not very user friendly. Um, but again, that is just literally pointing a, a web browser at the, the instrument. If you're looking just to, to, to monitor some activity, yeah, it's perfectly fine. Um, if, you, if you want to do more kind of in-depth work, we're going to be actually controlling the instrument. Um, there's probably a better way to do it. There's a, a bit of software from Roden Swartz called um, Commander which lets you take screenshots, control the instruments, um, load and save your setups, etc. You could put that on, control the scope via either Ethernet or USB, and then just remote to the, the PC, which is controlling the instrument. would probably give you more functionality. But we're just looking at the, the, the quick, simple way of doing it at the moment. And web browser, for an entry-level scope, it's, it's not bad. You do get certainly enough for to, to keep an eye on something in the lab when you're not there.